Hey, what's up? It's Matt with Movement System. In this video, we're going to talk about the training principles and adaptations associated with strength versus hypertrophy training. It's important that we understand the science of this and the evidence around strength and hypertrophy training and the specific adaptations that we get so that we can optimize the training decisions for ourselves and our clients. And I know what you guys are thinking, Matt, you are the biggest and strongest guy that I know, so I will trust you entirely. This really isn't about my training philosophy. This is more evidence-based. So what does the research say about the specific type of training that we should do for optimizing strength versus hypertrophy and the physiological adaptations associated with those? That's what we're gonna talk about. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so to lay the groundwork, if you're just beginning, you're actually gonna get both strength and hypertrophy from any type of training that you do, essentially. More precisely, as a beginner, you first get strength and then you get hypertrophy because the first six to eight weeks of training involve a lot of neuromuscular adaptations where you're putting weight on the bar almost every week, but then you'll hit a plateau in your strength gains and that's when you'll start to see hypertrophy. But now as a more advanced athlete with three to six months of training plus, we need to make more specific decisions about the sets and reps and the training principles that we're using in order to optimize towards strength or optimize towards hypertrophy adaptations. And this should be somewhat obvious because at the very highest level, power lifters who are very elite in optimizing for strength are doing very different training than bodybuilders who are elite in optimizing for the outcome of hypertrophy. There are some hybrid training principles which we'll talk about at the end, but for now let's talk about specifically what you can do to maximize strength. The most important variable for maximizing strength is intensity. And we're going to talk about this on a lot of different levels. First, in terms of intensity, we can think about it as percent one rep max or load on the bar. And for optimal strength gains, we need to have high load on the bar. For hypertrophy, we can get good results with 30% one rep max all the way up to 95% one rep max. But for strength, we really need to be at the high end of this at typically greater than 80% one rep max in order to have enough load on the bar to get the strength adaptations. Also, in regards to intensity, we need to have high intensity and high effort for each set throughout the duration of the workout. This typically means that our strength training sessions are low to moderate volume with fewer total sets per session than we would see with hypertrophy training. Fatigue is most associated with workout duration from an individual workout perspective and then also with volume from a program perspective. This is why we tend to see the best strength gains with low to moderate volume programs and adding in a ton of volume or a ton of sets really is going to compromise our ability to gain strength. That compromise usually occurs from the standpoint that as we increase volume, we typically can't maximize load as well. Doing a high volume training session on Monday will impair our ability to use high load and maximal effort and intent on a Wednesday or even Thursday training session. And this is actually a really important point to understand because this helps debunk some of the idea of this hybrid training program where you can optimize both strength and hypertrophy. We're either going to have to pick, are we going to do the higher volume training program that's going to have more exercise variation, more volume, and more fatigue associated with that, or are we going to choose to use lower sets and rep ranges with higher loads and optimize the variable of strength? And we really can't get great results by combining the two because there's going to be some interference. The way to combine that training and get better hybrid results is not within one program typically. It's by phase potentiation or by doing a full strength program where we're optimizing the variable of strength and then doing full blocks of training where we're optimizing the variable of hypertrophy. And for most advanced lifters, this block by block approach where we're spending four, eight, 12 weeks focusing on one physiological variable will actually get us better results, especially long term. There is some good evidence surrounding daily undulating periodization, which I'll probably talk about in a different video, but that's probably not going to be an optimal technique for optimizing either hypertrophy or strength. It's going to be a combination where there's a little bit of a trade-off and we're getting a little bit less of each, especially in the long term when we think about over four to six months compared with doing blocks of training that are more specific to the adaptation you're looking for. All right, so getting back to optimizing strength, what we're typically going to see is that most blocks where we're optimizing strength are going to be a load-based progression. 
meaning that we're moving from 80% to 82% to 84%, or another way to think about that is moving from 200 pounds on the bar to 210 to 220, and then we're adding load throughout that block of training. This is often paired with a decrease in volume. For example, working from six sets of five to five sets of five to five sets of four to four sets of four over the course of a block of training. By doing this type of training where we're greater than 80% one rep max, typically less than six reps, and then typically low to moderate volume, we're going to see our strength go up, but we actually may not see any hypertrophy during that block of training. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing because even if you do want to over the course of six months or a year, see both strength and hypertrophy, you're going to get better results by having blocks of training where you're really focused on one primary outcome and you're actually making meaningful progress to that over the course of four, eight, 12 weeks. By contrast, doing a little bit of everything for months and months often leads to plateaus. So the number of blocks that you might use that are strength specific will be different based on your goals. If you're a power lifter, you may have eight, nine, 10 blocks a year that have these strength specific adaptations. Whereas a bodybuilder or someone who's more focused on the hypertrophy side might only have one, two, three blocks per year of strength based training. But that's the level that we're making this decision at is in how many blocks of strength specific training versus blocks of hypertrophy specific training we want to do. And if you guys are interested in these program design variables that we're talking about today, then chances are you'd like Program Design 101, which is my course that helps you confidently write great programs for your clients and athletes. If you're interested in that, more information at the end of the video, as well as the description. Thinking about the adaptations from strength-specific training, we have things like increased motor unit recruitment, Golgi tendon organ inhibition, intra and intermuscular coordination, and possibly even an increased pination angle from training. These are all strength specific adaptations that we would see from doing the type of strength based training that is increasing load and very heavy and intense. If we think about these strength specific adaptations of motor unit recruitment and muscular coordination, we can probably see how that relates back to the training principles. We're not going to get high motor unit recruitment from, for example, accessory movements. Leg extensions or bicep curls or lateral raises just don't have the amount of load in the high threshold motor unit recruitment that's actually required to see strength gains. So we actually have good evidence that accessory movements don't meaningfully increase strength, at least in the short term. Rather, they actually help us build some hypertrophy, which can long term be beneficial for strength. But knowing that, we can make the decision that our strength-based blocks of training are probably going to have less accessory movements and more time and rest focused on the main compound lifts, whereas our hypertrophy-based program are going to have more exercise variety and more accessory movements. Now moving on to the specific adaptations and training principles associated with hypertrophy, we know that we want to generally train with higher volumes than we do with strength training. We're probably going to use more exercise variability with hypertrophy training because, for example, if we're trying to optimize hypertrophy of the deltoid, we want to hit lateral raises and reverse flies and a shoulder press to hit all the different regions of the deltoid muscle. By contrast, if we're just trying to optimize strength for the bench press or the overhead press, we're going to do training that's more motor pattern specific and we may not see great hypertrophy in the rear delts but we'll get better and better at the specific pressing movements that we're trying to build strength at. This variability of loading allows us to use greater exercise variation and also more frequency because we're not taxing the joints in the same way over and over again like we would be with strength training. So for hypertrophy training, when we're doing five, six variations of shoulder exercises two, three, four times a week, depending on the block of training that you're in, that variety is going to allow you to train at higher volumes without taxing the joints quite as much and without overusing a specific muscle or tendon or region. The primary adaptation that you get from hypertrophy training is hypertrophy. And this shouldn't be surprising. We're optimizing our volume towards that. We're using slightly lower loads for hypertrophy training to allow for increased frequency, but hypertrophy training should still be hard. We're actually probably going to go into workouts carrying a little bit more fatigue if we're optimizing for the variable of hypertrophy versus if we were optimizing for the variable of strength. So overall, I hope understanding these different training principles and these specific adaptations with strength versus hypertrophy training will help you make training decisions on what you want to optimize towards or the compromises you're willing to make to get a little bit of each. 
If you want to learn more, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. Follow along on Instagram at The Movement System. And also, if you're enjoying the YouTube videos, chances are you'll also enjoy The Movement System podcast, which you can subscribe to on Spotify or on Apple Podcasts. And then also, if you're interested in learning about program design in more detail, as well as earning CEUs if you're certified through the NSCA, then you should check out my course, Program Design 101, which is designed to help you learn to confidently write great strength programs for your clients and athletes. If that's something you're interested in, you can click the link in the description below or head to themovementsystem.com to learn more. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you do have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.